we are here today to do my very first gear review of the Helicon Tex training mini rig. Uh, this is a chess rig made by a company based in Poland. Designed in Poland, I'm pretty sure they said made in Vietnam. Yeah, designed in Poland, crafted in Vietnam. Uh, so it's not an American made product, which is disappointing. But after looking at several different uh, brands and types of chess rigs, I kind of fell in love with this one. Now you'll notice this it doesn't look like a combat based material, and that's because it's not. This is the nylon version. Uh, they also have a Cordura version, which I plan to get once it comes back in stock, but um, from what I understand, that may be a while. So I'm going to go over pretty much, just giving you a quick in-depth, uh, not in-depth because there's not much to chest rigs really, but I'm going to show you what uh, I plan on using it for um, and how I'm going to implement it with my company. By the way, my name is Nathan. I am the founder and COO of Black Wolf Protection Group based out of Portland, Oregon. Um, so if you've seen me on Instagram, uh, or maybe you've seen me in Portland, um, that's who I am. And what I do is executive protection work, uh, pretty much any type of physical security work. That's what me and my company do. All right, so I'm going, I've never been really a huge fan of chess rigs. I didn't really see their purpose and how they could be utilized, especially considering, uh, you know, you can get composite plastic level four plates that weigh five pounds each you know I mean yeah yeah they're rather pricey but you know as far as running gear these don't offer any kind of ballistic protection so I was kinda always skeptical on the whole chest rig thing but after uh, having this for a couple days now and thinking about ways to implement it into my work uh, I'm gonna go over how I plan on doing that with you so first, we're going to zoom in a little bit here, and we're going to go over this main, well, I'll tell you what, we'll just do the whole thing as a whole. So as you can tell, it has four magazine spots for 5.56 five, magazines. Now, they do have bungee that comes on there, and if you take the mags out, these are removable. It's Velcroed in but you can take these pouch, pouches out. Now what that allows for, I'm assuming, is larger mags. So if you run a 308 or maybe even just this different caliber, maybe you have an MP7, MP5, uh, you can take those out and adjust them or replace them with different types of uh, mag pouches. It also has a spot for four pistol mags, as you can tell. Um, you don't have to run four pistol mags. You don't have to run any pistol mags if you don't want to. Um, I'm going to keep four in there. You could maybe have two on this side, a can of pepper spray, flashlight on this side, a uh, small smoke grenade. It'd have to be a pretty small smoke grenade, but who knows. Um, be creative. You don't have to use it for its intended purpose. And zoom in just a little bit here to this main pouch. Uh, so the main pouch right here in the center, it's actually pretty cool. Um, they've got their, these are 550 cord zippers that are heat shrinked to protect them from fraying and being a little bit more uh, easy to grab. Let me kind of show you what I keep in here. All right. So as you can tell, it's got elastic webbing. I keep two battery powered chem lights. Chem, they're not chem lights, obviously if they're battery powered, but you know what I mean? One red, one white. You can use these for marking, signaling. Uh, all kinds of things. Be creative. I also have gun oil. Um, and if anyone's curious, not that you are, but if you are, I uh, discovered Lucas gun oil probably about four or five years ago. Um, and after using several different kind, it's pretty much my go-to now. Uh, uh, stuff works well. Also, it is mosquito season here in Oregon. So I am keeping with me, pretty much at all times, uh, bug spray in case it gets a little bit too uh, unburied. I don't use it unless I absolutely have to. Sometimes you do. 
Um, I keep a Sharpie, a write in the rain pen, and of course, since I have a write in the rain pen, a write in the rain notebook. Living uh, in the Pacific Northwest, you have plan on using it, using any kind of paper in the field. It better be right in the rain. And uh, if you think this is a makeup brush, you are correct. Uh, this is an Eco Tools makeup brush, and the reason I have this is these are very effective at um, removing removing small particles of dirt and debris from weapon systems, as well as applying very very good thin even coats of gun oil so I love having these on hand um, I actually probably have 15 of them in my actual rifle cleaning kit weapons cleaning kits I guess um, multi-tool this is an older Gerber that I just had lying around so that's what I just stuck in here for the time being I plan on making a putting a Leatherman in here buying another one and putting a Leatherman in here but for now the Gerber Gerber will suffice I've got a mesh pocket right here up front. Something that's always good to have on hand. Hand sanitizer. Uh, I can get, dig around in here. And extra batteries. So now you're always gonna wanna have the batteries in here that you have, that you carry with you. You're gonna wanna have spares for any kind of optics or electronics that you run. Whether it be wrist GPS, uh, flashlights, um, optics, you know, EOTEX, Surefire lights, whatever. Uh, you have optics that maybe run CR2032s. Two, uh, That's what these are for. Now, I only have two in here for right now. I am going to buy full packs or four packs of each of these to keep in here on hand. Again, this is specifically for, you know, single day type stuff. These are just emergency backups. And I also keep a small throwaway pack of Threadlock on hand, just in case. You never know. But as you can tell, I mean, this is pretty spacious for a chest rig. Um, I like it so far. Front pocket on the outside. This is big enough that I can put my whole hand in it pretty much. Um, I haven't really decided what I want to keep in here other than right now I have zip ties. They're always something good to have in the field and training on the job, multiple, multiple uses. Maybe I'll put a uh, like a roll of quarter inch duct tape or something in here. Who knows? But you know the zip ties they kind of follow around the edge, so they don't take up hardly any space. So there's plenty of room still in there for me to use. Uh, if you'll notice on the underside of the pouch, there are three Molly webbing straps or pals. Excuse me. This would be pals. Under that, I keep this. This is an the camera will focus on it. This is an H&H &H, uh, Kevlar cutter. This will cut through Kevlar, it'll cut through clothing, it'll cut through anything. So if you need to get somebody out of a bad situation, uh, somebody that's trapped in a seat belt, whatever. This is a good tool to have and it's super thin. Now, let's move on down to the med pack. Oops, I did forget to show you something up here. So zoom out just a little bit. This also has underneath the right in the ring a little 550 cord or 550 cord uh, hook. So if you have an S beaner something like that, hook it on there and go. Now this uh, admin pouch I plan on using as a med pack. Um, it's very surprisingly large and has a lot of storage room considering. Uh, so I'm going to show you kind of what I carry in there. Um, you obviously make your own decisions for the kind of medical gear you carry. I would suggest not carrying something that you don't know how to use. Um, especially if you're in a civilian world, you know, good medical care is generally only five to ten minutes away so the real important things to have as far as medical stuff goes is bleeding control so we're talking about tourniquets um, good pressure dressing stuff like that i go a little bit extra on there um, because i do have some medical training so i carry stuff that i feel like i know how to use um, always carry the basics though got band-aids and butterfly sutures triple antibiotic ointment 
and first aid burn cream. These are very good to have at the range because if anyone's ever taken hot brass, you understand how painful that can be. This first aid burn cream stops the pain almost immediately and it helps begin healing before uh, you even leave. We've got alcohol cleansing pads. If you don't know what alcohol cleansing pads are for, haze yourself. I've got these little go packs that I make. It's got two packs of aspirin, two packs of ibuprofen, and two packs of non-aspirin. Uh, anybody that knows pain relievers know that some people are intolerant to others, and then some of these you don't want to use with people that have specific medication that they're taking or other kind of medical conditions that you may need to be aware of before you give these to people. So, again, know your medical stuff. An extra little tube of Advil. That's personal use. A cat tourniquet that is staged and ready to be deployed. North American Rescue latex gloves. Well, not latex, I guess nitrile now. Um, don't, I know everybody likes cool tactical black gloves. I'm going to highly advise you not get those. Uh, get tan or a lighter colored, even like a hospital blue or purple. The reason for that is if you get blood on these, it shows up much better than the black gloves. The black gloves, especially if you're in a dark environment and you get blood on them, you may not know, you may not even know that that person's bleeding. But if you get blood on these, it's very obvious right away. It stands out. I've got a, I, I pretty much vacuum seal all of the stuff I keep in here. It helps keep it sterile longer and it also kind of compacts it down so it allows me to fit more stuff in here. I, I do have my own vacuum sealer. So I have two, in this little pack, I have two H&H &H compressed gauze, two packs of it, and it is four and a half inches by 4.1 yards. So you're looking at eight yards of compressed gauze right here. This is great for packing wounds. It's good for making uh, pressure dressings or whatever you may need it for. Uh, anybody that's ever had an IFAC knows exactly what this is and knows why they started wrapping it in a secondary bag it's because iodine, for whatever reason, is impossible to keep inside a plastic bottle, apparently. I do have some uh, more gauze pads on the back side of this. A triangle bandage, which as you can see is pretty compressed down. That's good for immobilizing dislocated broken uh, bones. And a SWAT T tourniquet. Now, I am not using a SWAT T tourniquet as an actual tourniquet on an adult. I have heard that they work, but why use it when I have a better product in the cat? Uh, so what the SWAT T would be used for in my specific field, or what I would suggest using it for for anyone, would be for a tourniquet of an infant or a very small child, um, because the cat tourniquet is it's made for an adult, really. They are effective for children, but not as effective as they are for adults. And there have been some cases where it's not, it can't get quite tight enough around an infant infant's limb because of this plastic piece not being able to stretch completely. But the SWAT T would be, I think, great for infants and children. Um, obviously, do your own research on that. The, what I would use this for most of, more than anything, if you don't know what a SWAT T tourniquet is, it's pretty much just a very, very long piece of rubber. It has directions printed on it that shows you how to use it, but it's just a long, long rubber strip. I think they're like four or five feet long. Um, but these make amazing pressure dressings. In conjunction with the compressed gauze, uh, you wad it up, pack the wound, do whatever you need to do, and then wrap the SWAT T tourniquet around it extremely tightly. Uh, yeah, I mean, they make amazing pressure dressings, and I have used these in that kind of scenario. Uh, two rolls of duct tape. These are good for multiple things outside of just medical stuff. Uh, duct tape has literally limitless uses. I keep two small rolls of that. Ace bandage. Simple. Makes sense to have. And last but not least, two high fan chest seals. Uh, these are made by North American Rescue. Um, pretty much the best, in my opinion, the best company out there for medical equipment. Especially tactical medical equipment. Uh, years and years in the industry proven effective by this stuff. No, I'm not endorsed by any of these people. I've used their gear um, in real life scenarios, so I know it works. 
That's the only reason I support it. Uh, so, without going everything back in there, we're going to talk about this. My battery's dying on my camera, so I'm going to try to power through this. You can see there are two 550 cord loops right here. Um, very conveniently placed to hang gloves on, like I've done in this case. These are pig gloves. Um, can't remember the uh, manufacturer, but if you search pig glove or pig tactical glove, those will come up. These are the alphas. Amazing gloves, and they are smart screen uh, compatible. You've got Ear Pro on this side. Um, these are Bluetooth walkers. Again, we're talking about training, so you know, listening to music while I'm doing this stuff. Definitely an option. Up top, always nice to have a flashlight on hand. This is a Nebo uh, Rebel. It's kind of like a mini moonbeam for those that were in the military. Uh, 600 lumens. The battery didn't die last night, <laughs> which apparently it did. But it's a 600 lumen, high, low, and strobe function. And it fits very nicely on the gear. And then right here, I've got a Columbia River knife and tool. Just it, it, This is just a little trash knife. Uh, I've already had someone criticize these. Um, I have a discount. Columbia River Knife and Tool is located fairly close by, uh, so I do utilize that discount. And, you know, it, it, it's a good little trash knife. It'll work out well for me for what I intend to use it for. And though I'm not trusting my life to this. <laughs> All right, now let's get into how I see myself implementing uh, this gear in my daily life and uh, in my company. So, like I said, we do a lot of executive protection and with that, uh, we do a lot of training in the field. You very rarely in executive protection are gonna be loaded out with a full kit, uh, hard plates, plate carrier, stuff like that. Very often, more times than not, you're in business professional or even suit and tie. Um, I know one of my clients, uh, even though I'm literally just a glorified chauffeur for this client, um, they always want suit and tie. So, yes, I am carrying, yes, I am armed, because there are some very significant threats to this person's life and have been in the past. Um, they only want that professional appearance. So, what we're talking about is using this with soft concealable body armor. When you're in that suit and tie situation, when you're in that professional environment, when you're wearing that suit and tie, the business professional, but you still need body armor, uh, generally you're going to be wearing something like this along these lines. This is the safe, uh, excuse me, Safari Land Second Chance. Um, safe Life Defense I know makes some pretty legit stuff uh, and is significantly cheaper than this. Although from what I understand, just as effective, um, I do own Safe Life Defense. Thankfully, I've never had to find out if these or those are effective, but based on the videos and testimonials that they post and that I've heard from others, they both work really well. They both do their job. They both give you that second chance. So what we're talking about is movements, especially if you're dealing with a high profile business person, um, you're gonna have uh, you know, you're going to be escorting them in and out of meetings, in buildings, stuff like that. You're obviously not going to go into these kind of meetings with them if you do escort them in, in tack gear. So maybe there are times, especially if you're doing overseas stuff, when you need to have quick access to a heavier loadout, or as we like to call it in the industry, more ass. That's what this provides, all right? It's simple to put on, puts, takes maybe five to ten seconds to put on depending on how fast you are and how used to you are to putting it on. It is a little bit more awkward, but awkward than a hard vest because it's all weighted in the front. There's no weight in the back. So you kind of put it on like an apron and then have to adjust it from there. It can be a little bit cumbersome, but once you get used to it, it's fine. Um, but that's where this, I think this thing is really gonna shine for me, is when you're making those movements and you need to have more gear readily assess accessible to you and be able to remove that very quickly when you do need to go in somewhere and be more low-key. All right. 
Um, price on this in US dollars, I think, after shipping and everything, came out to about 125. Uh, so it's very, I think, very fairly priced. Um, again, the only downside, this is not an American-made product. Um, unfortunate as that is, I still think it's pretty cool. I guess I should go over the harness system. <laughs> so it does have an H harness. It also has hook and loop on the back, this being loop. So if you have patches, if you wanna wear your super cool goon patch, you know, from OAF Nation on the back so everybody knows what's up, throw it on there, rock it. Uh, if you have a trainer patch, if you have a security patch, whatever, you know, be creative. Any kind of morale patch really will go on there. But it's an H harness, buckles on each side, it buckles up here, and a belly strap that goes around uh, your lower, I guess your lower mid, back to keep it nice and snug to your body. Overall, the fit is amazing. Um, I will attach pictures of me wearing it, and uh, you can see for yourself. Once I get some training in with it, I'll post those videos as well, but thank you for watching. See you next time.